Good morning, viewers. My name is Ewere Okonta. Thank you for joining our live broadcast today as we, as we discuss a car youth and empowerment, changing the narratives with Dr. Donald Peterson. Good morning, Dr. Good morning, Ewere. Thank you for having me. So welcome, sir. Who is Donald? Who is Dr. Donald Peterson? Uh, Donald Peterson is um, an Ika man from Agbo Obusere. He's a father, um, he's a husband, he's uh, an economist, and um, Donald Peterson Wale. Thank you. Okay. Is Dr. Donald Peterson a politician? We are all politicians, I guess. So in a nutshell, you are a politician. Yeah, I'm practicing politics actively. On what platform, sir? Is uh, you it know, PDP Delta, or the APC? Delta is PDP, is our religion here. So everybody in Delta should keep to the religion of Delta, which is PDP. So who is a youth, sir? In your own definition, who is a youth? Um, a youth, according to the UN Charter, is any person between the ages of um, 18 to 35. But the reality on ground in Nigeria is that a youth could be any person from 16 to even 60 years old. So what is your definition of an empowered youth? An empowered youth is a youth that is equipped with vision, a youth equipped with skills, a youth that is innovative. An empowered youth is a youth that is productive. That's my definition. So a car youth, an empowerment. How is, the, how is the Peterson Foundation changing the narratives? Uh, we are not just changing narrative. We've come to supplement and complement the narrative. His Excellency, Dr. Ifan Okawa, he's the true game changer. He has changed the narrative by setting up the youth acquisition um, and skill training center, you know, where skills are, are imparted into the youth. And uh, that is the true form of empowerment that I see. So what we are doing at Peterson Foundation is only to complement and supplement where necessary. Uh, to be more specific, in what areas is your foundation involved in? As regards to uh, empowerment. My foundation is involved in the area of skills acquisition. It's involved in education mostly ICT, and um, also in uh, movie production, acting, and um, vocational training of our youth. Sir, so I may want you to talk, to be more specific about the Python programming and language that the foundation is involved in. What is the objective behind it? Okay, first, before stating the objective behind it, we should look at Python program. Python program today, as it were, is the deepest and the neatest programming language available so far. And um, we felt that teaching our youth this robust programming language will help in uh, expanding the frontiers of knowledge in the in Ica nation. And... Um, we started off early this year, I think sometime in February, we were training about 164 youth at the College of Education before the pandemic, um, before the COVID pandemic breakout. And um, we went online, we've been online since. We are resuming classes first week in December. And uh, if you look at most of, this, most of the apps today, and software used today, most of them run on Python program. So we're trying to 
to impact our youth with the right set of skills needed for tomorrow's opportunity. So in a nutshell, the Python program is still ongoing? Very much ongoing. We're returning to classes um, first week in December. Before now, we've been online. And out of the 164, about 150 people have been online with us. But, uh, the, because the story on the street is that uh, the foundation have not been able to sustain the program, that you have stopped the program. So I want you to clear the air. Um, that is very... It's contrary to what is on ground. You know, people say a lot of things. And there is nothing you do that people will not have a positive and a negative side to it. But the, the students who are with us online can actually testify. Um, contact class, we're 2164. Online, we have about 151 or 152 online. The 152 people are all indigenous of Ika. They are here with us, so they can testify. Okay. It was only right for us to go, for us to stop the contact classes at the outbreak of COVID-19. We all know what happened during that time. Even schools and tertiary institutions were closed. There was no way we could flout the directive of government by continuing the classes, the contact classes. But the classes continued online. So people who say uh, we, we stopped it probably are not properly informed. So outside the Python programming language, the language uh, outside the Python programming language program, uh, recently I learned that uh, the foundation is also involved in uh, organizing extramural classes for a car youth. So more like yeah, this, you, sir. Yeah, you know, after the first outbreak of COVID-19 and the lockdown, you know, a gap has been created because our students were home for like five months plus, and uh, that has created a gap. And we felt that we should complement and supplement what government is doing by coming up with extramural classes. We wrote to government, and government graciously, His Excellency graciously approved three schools for us for the pilot scheme, the phase one, which we've started now. The model um, school in town, then nursery primary school one and nursery primary school two are centers. The lectures have since began since um, 9th of November. And um, the teachers are always there. The students are turning up. In fact, we are trying to see how we will write back to government to give us more centers now because the first uh, 10 days is already a huge success and uh, we feel that we can replicate it in uh, other communities now because we're very ready for it yeah okay. so uh, there is this uh, permit me to always to always uh, quote from the walls in the street they are saying that uh, you are restricting all your empowerment uh, projects in nabo is that so uh, that is not true. Um, I'm an Ika, first and foremost, I'm an Ika son. I'm proud to be an Ika man. We see all of the here she's sharing. What we are doing is about Ika for now. And uh, when we wrote to government, government approved these centers for us. You know, government has to watch what we are doing and be satisfied before they can allow us to go to other places. But if we're not doing right, they will not give us further approvals and they will close us down even. So, uh, you know, when you start something, it has to start from somewhere. We are not just restricting it to Agbo. We are Ika people. We're a very proud one for that matter. And that's why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, sir, permit me, what is the qualification for one to be involved in your film academy? Um, the qualification, first and foremost, is that you have to be an Ika indigen, because uh, what we are, what the film academy is all about, is solely set up to impact acting skills and movie production skills to Ika indigen. So once you're Ika indigen, you're qualified. The second qualification is that you are interested, you show interest 
in either acting or movie production. Now we teach you. Because, you know, the film industry is growing in leaps and in bounds. Like as I told people, in 2015, Nollywood was valued at $695 million. In 2018, Nollywood was valued at $2.1 billion. At the end of 2019, Nollywood was valued at over $5 billion. You can interpolate that in under 10 years and see how what the valuation of Nollywood will be. So I tell people that next to oil, Nollywood is our black gold. So that's why we're investing and preparing our youth for the future so that uh, they can take advantage in the industry. You see, all the known stars today did not just wake up and become stars or known all over the country or all over the world. They started from somewhere, and that's what we're doing. We're sowing the seed, the right seed in our youth to develop them real and awaken that giant in them. So that tomorrow you'll be surprised. In another 10 years or 15 years from now, you will see big stars from Ikalan, you know. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. Uh, sir, uh, I also know that, at least of course, I'm a beneficiary of your scholarship uh, program. What is the idea behind the scholarship program that your foundation is financing? Okay, the idea behind it is, first and foremost, to um, a micronation of highly intelligent and very well-schooled people. That is why our scholarship is tailored in such a way that it is to PhD. And the only thing you need to do is to sign a covenant. When I say covenant, it's not something to just, you know, take, have an undertaking that you will read up the PhD. And the reason is this. Imagine a Ikaland in another 20 years where you have over 10,000 or 15,000 PhD holders, you know, it means that it will be a land of people with illuminated mind. It will be a land of people that are intellectuals. And that is what we want. We actually trying in our own little way to see how we can minimize illiteracy, and also try to let our people see that um, the, the, the university, the, the first degree will become like a school sir, you know. So we, we want to have, we look forward to having a society that is highly lettered, very well schooled. Yeah, that's why we're doing it. Uh, uh, what qualification does one need to have before he can uh, benefit from your scholarship? Primarily, you need to be an Ika indigen. Secondly, you need to be interested in going to school. That's just all you need. You don't have to be super, super brilliant. You don't have to be exceptionally brilliant for you to do that. Then the third which is a very important one, is that you are seen as somebody who is not able to go to school or be sent to school by his or her parents. That is, you are from a poor home. Yeah. We know it's not everybody that has benefited as from a poor home, but these are the criteria. And some people who have benefited are not from poor home are just people who have shown exceptional zeal to go to school, and probably they are a bit handicapped by the fact that they are committed to other projects or so. So this first phase, was, you know, we just do that for them. But the second phase of scholarship that is going to come up from next year, it will be strictly for the needy. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, there is uh, this other program that your foundation is involved in, the IELTS uh, program. Yeah. So a lot of people consume, 
consider that program as a free visa or something. Or, or I don't know. So I may want you to also throw more light on that, sir. Yeah, the the program we introduced the program because we were heartbroken when we see young men trying to cross the desert, dying in in in, in, the, in large numbers in the Mediterranean, drowning. Um, and also we we also try to discourage our youth from taking vis uh, visiting visa and then going to another country to go and seek asylum and stay. We said there is a better way to do these things where you leave your country as a skilled worker to another country and you leave with a job opportunity and an offer. I mean, an offer, and a job opportunity. So you go into that country and live well. You have a better foundation. And um, IELTS has given us that window because Canada and Australia are two very big co countries and they're looking for highly skilled individuals that will come into their country. And we have them so much here. Imagine the number of graduates alone in Ikalan. So much. Every corner you turn to, we have graduates. So why then should we allow a graduate to go and seek visiting visa and then, you know, go abroad and start um, looking for asylum or to seek uh, to declare refugee status. We don't want that. Rather, what we are doing is we set up tutorials now for them. The, the, the classes will also start 1st of December, where we teach them for three months, and they go to sit for this exam. By the way, the exam is every month. They go to sit for this exam. Once you can score 8.0 and above, it is the Canadian government that will be looking for you. We have the first success uh, case already, the person of Scholar Archer. Um, she has concluded her documentation uh, with a permanent resident to Canada. And soon everybody will see her leave. So it's possible to leave from our nation here in Ikala to Canada as an expatriate, just as we see expatriate coming to Nigeria. The same way they leave. All it takes is sacrifice, bend down, study, read. After all, Paul said, I, Paul, study to make myself approved. So what we're trying to say is to channel the youthful energy that we have here into productive youth uh, use, where the youth can see that education is no scam, that it pays, actually. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. I'm uh, still talking about empowerment. Before now, well, our idea of uh, empowerment is... Uh, where they give uh, the youth or kada, uh, this what is it called? The kekena pep, uh, small grinding machines, you know. And before the end of the program, you see the youth selling it, selling it off right there in the field. So how is your foundation changing the narratives? Like as I said, we are not changing narrative. We are just complementing what is being done. Now, first and foremost, to give out okada. Uh, the grinding machines, and it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's actually an empowerment, a form of empowerment. But you see, we're all different people. Our own kind of empowerment is to build mental infrastructure, to equip you with that skills that is needed for tomorrow's world. That's what we believe in, in Deep Edison Foundation. So, is that like somebody saying, oh, um, uh, I'm a Christian, yeah, we're all Christians, but I'm a Catholic, I'm a Pentecostal and all that, but you know, we're all Christians. So the person giving motorbikes, the person giving grinding machines, the person giving out all that, they're also doing empowerment. But our own kind of empowerment is to give you the skills and prepare you for tomorrow. That's what we do. Uh, uh, why are you involved in philanthropy? Okay, very interesting. I've been asked that question several times. First and foremost, um, the Bible is the hand that give it and the hand that take it. That is one. Two is, you see, there is this currency that you can save up in that will count after life. You know what that currency is? It's called love. When you show love, and how do you show love? By 
doing things for people, by being there for people, there for people you know. Now, when you do all, that, you do all that, it counts for you after life. You after life. So, you can so simply you say that we're actually that saving, we're for actually after saving, saving for after life. So, that's it. That's why we're involved that's in all of this. Involved in all of this. After, besides, after, besides, it feels good it also, feels good also to, see to see that another person is happy, another person is happy because you care. Because you care. Yeah. Uh, sir. Is, I hope uh, there is also this uh, words or this street that uh, your involvement in philanthropy is politically motivated. Um, uh, you know, people say all, people, people say all, all sorts of, sort of things, but they should, but they should look back, look back. The first, the first beneficiary of our scholarship, of our scholarship graduated in graduated June this year. June this year. That means that we gave that, that scholarship that in 2016. Was I, was I on ground? Was I interested in politics in 2016? The answer is no. The answer is no. And besides, most and of the besides, things we're, of the doing things here, we're doing here, we started them like started them two and a half years ago, two or years two ago. years ago. Now, isn't that too isn't that early to start doing things start doing if you are interested in politics? Because, in politics because the, the next election is going to come in 2023. So why don't you wait don't you till 2022, 2022, late 2022, to start doing things? Then people cannot say it's politics. What I want to say is, is in our DNA to do what we're doing. It's just part of us. It's just like a fish in water. Fish can swim well and live well in water. But take fish out of water, that fish cannot survive. Take giving. Take what I'm doing what I'm now doing, out of me, out of me, I don't think I will know how to do any other thing. This is just what I do best, and that's what I'm doing. I'm enjoying doing, enjoying it. I'm enjoying doing it. it. I'm not under any pressure doing, 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 doing it. It's just my life. It's just my life. It's just the way I am. Just the way I am. Uh, sir, what is your impression about a car youth? Uh, a car youth, uh, a car youth uh, uh, very curious, very curious people. people. They are. They are Highly, highly independent minded, independent minded, sometimes opinionated, sometimes opinionated, highly, opinionated highly opinionated, but, uh, but uh, they truly they want, want to be independent, independent and uh, uh, they are go-getters. They are go-getters. That's my impression That's about my impression. Ikayus. Ikayus. They are, they are, they are proud they are people. Proud. Proud positively, proud positively in the sense that uh, there is this uh, saying, Ekamen in, you know, in Ika. they want to do, things, to themselves. do things themselves. They also want to be they also want to be givers. Uh, that's uh, why you see every Ika, 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 Ika they're not lazy at all. Lazy at all. They, they want to work. They want to work. And they want to earn it. Want to earn it. Yeah, that's my impression yeah, that's of Ika. Ika, Ika what do you want to be remembered for? Oh, oh. my daughter asked me my this, asked me. and I told, her, I told her when I die. When I die, apart from writing my name, writing my name on on the, the stone, stone, just write, just he write, died empty. empty. I want to be remembered that I died by the I died empty. Dying empty, Dying empty simply means empty. that. I died, I died, emptying every talent, every talent, everything that God everything has deposited, God has deposited in, me in me is out, out for the benefit, for the benefit of, humanity. of humanity. That's what I want to be remembered. That's what I want to be remembered. Uh, just tell us uh, your final message of hope for the Kayut. Ah, my message yeah, of hope for the Kayut is that tomorrow is going to be better. All what we need to do we need to is to be strategic about strategic our approach, about to, development. Our approach to development. And, um, and there is uh, no easy way out of it. We need education. Um, um, we need to, need to be determined. determined. We need to persevere. persevere. We need to be focused. Be focused. And tomorrow will be a lot better. Be a lot better. Uh, because we've got everything, so we've it, got takes everything it takes to be the best micronation in the best micronation. Thank you, Dr. Donald Peterson, for being on our program today. 
Thank you very much for having Thank me. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, sir. So, viewers, that is the end of our program for today. Join us next time by subscribing to our YouTube channel at the Werukota Television. And you can also follow us on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody.